Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we're gonna be working on the NEC Turbo Express. And uh, I know that I've shown this particular console on the channel before. So this is a portable version of the TurboGrafx-16. But this Turbo Express is not like your standard Turbo Express. Um, in fact, here is the motherboard right here. And um, for those of you that have experience with this console, you can see that there has been some pretty bad stuff uh, done to this console. <laughs> For one, if you take a look here, you can see that this uh, this contrast wheel or volume wheel, not sure which, but it is pretty wrecked. Um, someone's replaced the capacitors, but there's a couple weird things like, like the fact that this is vertical is not good. It means it's not gonna fit in the shell. Um, someone's bypassed the fuse. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of crap that happened uh, to the Hue card slot. So I suspect that if I try to plug this in and power it on, um, it's not going to read any games because there's damage here. So thankfully there is a solution. Um, and so what I've done to try to fix this thing is by this. And this is a PCB that is designed by Kaitor Industries. And basically what it does is it allows me to reproduce, or it's a, it's a faithful reproduction of um, the PC Engine GT or the Turbo Express cartridge connector right here. Um, and so I have two options. One is that I could take the um, original cartridge slot off, although I don't really know if this thing works. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna be taking this new reproduction uh, cartridge slot and putting it in, and this is made by JT Studio. So let's try to see if we can take these parts and resurrect this thing. Okay, so before I get started, I just wanted to kind of give a survey of all of the damage and problems that I see so far. So a repair like this can be really challenging to do because um, there could be multiple faults and you don't know that in advance and um, you could successfully repair one thing and then the console still doesn't work. So uh, a couple obvious things is that this potentiometer is really wrecked. It might still work, but I don't want to leave it like this. I'm going to need to replace this at some point. Um, someone installed this capacitor wrong, so it needs to be really laying flat on the PCB. And on the other side, it looks like there's been some sort of enamel applied here. So I'm guessing there was some kind of trace repair done here. Uh, I really don't know. Uh, but thankfully, I do have a working Turbo Express, so I can test continuity here and make sure that this is correct. Either way, I'm going to have to take this cap, loosen it up, and lay it flat like how it's supposed to. Um, someone has also removed the headphone jack. They might have done that just so that they could easily solder in the surface mount caps. Uh, I do have to say that the job of putting in these surface mount caps is relatively good. I don't see any real issues here with that. Um, one thing that's definitely bad is this bypass to the fuse. So what I'm going to do is remove this bypass and install a replacement fuse. Um, I actually don't have any new ones in stock at the moment, so I'm gonna grab a working one off of a Super Nintendo and toss it in here and just do that temporarily. Uh, what else? The big thing that I'm really not sure about is right over here. So there's normally a coil that's positioned right here on the Turbo Express and it's covered in epoxy. For some reason, I'm not really sure why, um, someone has removed it and I don't have it, so I have really no way of um, replacing it, and I don't know, it's probably necessary. We'll see what happens uh, without the coil. I mean, I might be able to use a modern display like an LCD DRV in its place, but right now without it here, it's not so great. Um, one thing I can say though is the screen and the controller PCB on this uh, console does work correctly. So I was able to take a working unit and power it on using this. And I can tell the screen is good, the controls are good. So at least I can say this half is in good shape. So let's get started with undoing some of this mess and then we can proceed to desolder the uh, original cartridge connector. All right, so we've gotten this thing into a better state than it was. Uh, so I went ahead and replaced the fuse and the crappy bodge here with a proper one and a half amp fuse here. 
Um, hopefully that doesn't blow, but we'll find out when we actually try testing this thing. <laughs> Um, I went ahead and replaced the uh, 470 microfarad capacitor with a new one uh, just because the original one, the leads were too short, so I couldn't lay it flat on its side. This one's a little bigger than I would like, but it's going to do the job, and I did test continuity between the positive and negative leads, and everything seems to be uh, connected up correctly. I used a working Turbo Express as my reference, and I was able to confirm all of those connections were fine. Um, I went ahead and put the... Uh, headphone jack in place so that's all good um what else did i do and then i did some checking on my working turbo express and i found that you know what normally is here is a coil and this coil is basically like a choke it's used for filtering purposes and normally the connection goes from this pad here over to this pad and then over here to the positive connection on this capacitor. So for now, because I don't have a coil, I'm just going to go ahead and bridge the connection. So it means I don't have that filtering, so the power might not be as clean as I would like, but for testing purposes, this should be fine and I should be able to get at least a picture and confirm that things are working correctly. All right, so I think that's enough repairs on the board to at least continue further. So the next thing we're gonna do is move forward with the Kytor Industries um, Hue card connector. And so the way that this is gonna work is I've got my replacement Hue card slot from JT Studio. And so all I gotta do here is solder that into place. You could also use the original one, but like I said, I think the one that I have on this board is really in very bad shape. I don't really trust it. So I figured I'd just go with a completely new one. And as you can see, this just slots right in and then I just have to flip it over and make all of the connections. So that's one half of my problem. The second half is that I have to attach this flex connector. And so that goes right over here. And so the idea here is that we're gonna position this perpendicular to the main motherboard and then solder each one of these connections into place. Um, and that should have enough structural uh, stability and strength so that I can then attach the flex cable here. And then that goes between these two boards. So we'll go ahead and make those connections now. And then let's see if um, that's all it takes to get this Turbo Express working again. All right, so the flex cable connector has been soldered into place, and I'm sorry it was hard to film that because like it's all at a perpendicular angle here. But as you could probably tell in the video, all I was doing was just using a generous amount of flux and pre-tinning both sides and then bringing them together. And then occasionally there would be a bridge and I would just use a, a little bit of solder braid to um, separate that bridge. So I took a look and everything seems to be connected correctly. So now all we've got to do is just lift up these little uh, bales here and we just position the flex connector in place like so. And now we're gonna take the cartridge slot and do the same. And there we go. So I think we are now ready to plug this thing back together and give it a quick test and see if we've got a working Turbo Express. Okay, so some time has passed and I have now reassembled the Turbo Express. And uh, at first I thought that it just simply wasn't working and that there were more problems with it um, than what I have initially worked on so far. Uh, but what I discovered is that it is in fact working. <laughs> so the first thing I did was I took American Games and I took my Turbo EverDrive and I put it in there and I had it set to Turbo Graphics mode and absolutely nothing was working at all. But what I discovered is that if I set the Turbo EverDrive to behave as though it was a PC Engine game, then suddenly I do actually get some life out of this thing. So let me go ahead and power it on. And as you can see, the screen isn't working at all. But now if I just push some buttons,
So I believe this is Aero Fighters. And so, yeah, you can tell that it's working. And uh, I've been able to actually play the game blind and I can, you know, get the game to work correctly. So I believe that, you know, we're most of the way there. So the screen is clearly not working. Uh, I actually tested the screen in my personal console, so I know the screen itself is fine. Um, and I know it's an issue with the board itself. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and contact the, uh, the maker of the Kaitor Industries uh, replacement part because what I think is happening here is that it's actually converting the console from a Turbo Express into a PC Engine GT, and now it's only playing Japanese games. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'll be back in a little bit, and I'll have a few more updates for you. Okay, so a little bit more time has passed, and now I have a few more updates. So I did speak with the guys at Kaitor Industries, and so they confirmed what I had suspected, which is basically that when you install this, um, it does effectively convert your Turbo Express into a PC Engine GT, you know, which is okay and all. I mean, it's better having a working Turbo Express than absolutely nothing, but ideally I was hoping for it to just be a Turbo Express again for the person who owns this thing. Um, but they are super awesome over there, and so they actually informed me about a new product that they're making, which is this right here. So this um, is a replacement of the uh, Hue card slot, but unlike this model here, this will allow you to create a region-free console. So you can basically hold down the select button at start, and it will be a Turbo Express, and if you hold down no buttons at the start, it will be a PC Engine GT. So that's pretty damn awesome. I mean, this is like a really cool product. And um, I don't think this was something that was easy to do or maybe even at all with a Turbo Express or a PC Engine GT. So so that's great. Um, and they sent this to me um, uh, just a couple days ago. I'm really grateful for that. And so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is um, basically install this in place of the original model that I have here. So I've got another Hue card slot right here that I uh, desoldered from the Turbo Express, and I'm going to go ahead and solder this into place, and we'll give this thing a test. It works with the um, flex cable that I already had from the previous kit, so I actually don't really need to do any soldering on the Turbo Express. I just need to basically build this thing, and that's it. So that's one thing that we're going to do. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is to address the fact that the screen isn't working. Rather than trying to figure out what's wrong on... The Turbo Express because I, I'm afraid it might be just just a little bit too much and also it's a lot of time um, and energy and and the original screen frankly isn't that great I mean uh, it's, it's just not uh, and, and nowadays there's very easy options to uh, replace it so so that's what we're gonna do here so instead of trying to fix the original screen circuit we're just gonna go ahead and install an LCD DRV and I've shown this on the channel before it produces a really outstanding crisp RGB image. And um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put this in and that should solve our final problem about having uh, video input. Um, what else is there? So one other thing that I, I didn't go over is that um, I did end up replacing the volume wheel. I found a, a modern replacement. So I went ahead and installed that. That was probably one of the last things that was really messed up on this console. Uh, I still don't have a replacement part for this coil. I, I'm hoping that everything will still work with it the way that it is. Um, it's really unfortunate that this part had been removed in the first place because it wasn't related to the problems uh, at all. But um, but yeah, either way, I still should still be able to get uh, a video image out of this, and I'll still look into this and see if I can find a replacement. Um, and then lastly, I, I did end up having problems with the controller PCB itself. This is actually a fairly common problem with Turbo Express and PC Engine GT. So you can have this capacitor right here. It's on the other side. It's a 47 microfarad capacitor. And um, these can leak pretty badly. And there's a bunch of traces right nearby. And so sometimes these corrode um, due to that capacitor leakage. And so as a result, you might have one or more buttons not working. You might also have the turbo function not working. So in this case, this button, which I believe is button, uh, yeah, it's button number one, was not working. Um, and it was because of this capacitor leakage here. So what I did was there was a little pad right here and I mapped out that it was missing a connection between here and, and here. So I just simply installed a little bodge wire between the two points and that restored everything. And so now this 
controller PCB is working 100% normal. Um, so, so yeah, that's just a quick summary of the state of affairs right now. <laughs> so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install the R LCD DRV um, because that's going to allow us to uh, actually see a video image from this thing for the first time. All right, so let's get to it. All right, so the LCD DRV has been installed and um, I did go through this kind of quickly, but that's because I've already actually published a video specifically on the LCD DRV. And it's kind of not the main goal here. What I'm trying to do really here is just get this console up and running again. So um, what you see here is the, uh, this is the connector where the old screen used to go. So I desoldered that and then I installed these wires here, the red, green, and blue wires, that's RGB and that connects over to the RGB pads on the LCD DRV. This yellow wire right over here, it goes on this via that is right next to R202, and that's C-Sync, and so C-Sync comes in uh, right over here where this yellow wire goes. And then finally, we just need power and ground, and so I used one of these anchor points, this is where the RF shield used to be for ground, and then five volts can be tapped from this large power transistor here, um, and so, those are all of the main connections. The only other things to discuss is that you can desolder this little jumper right here, and this cuts off the backlight uh, voltage. And so the backlight was used on the older screen, and it's high voltage. And so by um, removing this jumper, you actually make this console a little bit more energy efficient. It's not burning through as much power to you know power up a backlight that no longer exists. Um, it's optional, of course, you don't have to do this, but it does make it a little bit more energy efficient. And then just flipping over, uh, well, it's going to be tough to see this. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. So, um, the only other thing to do is there's a little transistor here called Q507 and that needs to be desoldered and you need to set a jumper wire from the top pad of Q507 all the way over to this ceramic capacitor right here. So, so this connection needs to also be made. But that's about it. Um, so all of that has been done. And I also went ahead and cut the, um, the opening to accommodate the new screen. I did that off camera because it's a bit tedious. And then I installed this uh, 3D printed mount that you can get from console five. I love this thing, it centers it perfectly every time and it makes it look, you know, factory fresh and professional. So yeah, let me go ahead and power this thing on and let's see if it actually works. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. Are we gonna have video or not? Okay, very good sign. Ah, beautiful. All right, it's working. Uh, so we finally got video on this thing and um, everything else works. So, so this is fantastic. Um, I do need to adjust the brightness. It's a little bit too bright to my eyes, but I can do that on the back of the, um, of the LCD DRV. It's just this little potentiometer right over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera. Um, so we're just about done with this repair. The only thing left to do is install the region free uh, Hue card slot. And let's go ahead and take care of that now and get this thing wrapped up. All right, so the region free board is all finished and it really wasn't all that much work. I just had to take this Hue card slot and install it. 
and you can either pull this off of your original GT or Turbo Express, um, or you can buy a new one from JT Studio like I was showing earlier in the video. So once that's installed, you only have to solder one wire between the controller pad and the region freeboard. So there's a pad here for select. You just solder straight to there. And then you've got to connect that wire on the other end right over here to this little pad that's right next to C801. So what happens now is that if the select button is held down, the console is going to boot in the Turbo Express uh, USA region. And if not, it just defaults to PC Engine. Um, so there is a way of permanently forcing it to be Turbo Express mode. So you see this little jumper here, J820. If you bridge this jumper, it will always boot in Turbo Express mode. So I'll talk to the guy who owns this thing and ask him what he would prefer. Like if he just wants it to be a Turbo Express permanently, you can just solder this pad and you're good to go. However, if uh, you want that flexibility, which I think most people honestly would want, then you just make this connection right here and you just hold down select and you're good to go. All right, so I'm gonna reconnect everything up, reassemble this thing, and then let's give it a final test. All right, so everything's fully assembled and I have the EverDrive plugged in. And right now it's set to TurboGrafx-16 mode, which means that if I don't press any buttons and I turn it on, which is what I'm doing right now, it should just hang and have a white screen like this. This is typically what a TurboGrafx does if you take a hue card, an out of region game and try to play it. So that makes sense. Um, now, if I hold down select and power it on, it's gonna switch to Turbo Express region and it should work. And would you look at that? <laughs> All right, so this thing is fully functional now. We have a region-free Turbo Express that you can toggle between USA and Japan simply by holding the select button at boot. And otherwise, everything else about this console is working perfectly. So if I can just go here really quick and we'll just put on Bonk's Adventure. And there we go. Everything is looking and sounding great. I really wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to fix this thing. It was a pretty difficult repair. There was a lot of broken stuff and the original owner of this thing really messed it up pretty bad. Um, but I'm glad that I was able to bring it back from the dead and even give it a couple of upgrades with the improved screen and with the region free functionality. So yeah, that's about it for this week's video. Um, if you guys like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos out like this every week. And of course, if you need your consoles repaired or modified, you can reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.